Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, out here to tell you about the 2022 ROKC, Red October Kalashnikov Championship. Big picture, 30,000 foot view, what is it? It's a shooting competition, largely centered around communist Soviet bloc guns, AK-47, AK-74, variants thereof, kind of all centric to those guns to include like the Galil, which borrows a lot from them and then getting into even some of the sub guns and stuff from again soviet countries and it's pretty cool so rifle dynamics as well as a bunch of other sponsors kind of put it on and pretty cool it was down there at pro gun vegas and i had the opportunity to go down and shoot basically early thursday and friday i guess it'd be kind of the main match going saturday and sunday and I in part shot it with a bunch of people who were going to volunteer to RSO. And then in addition, um, well, a bunch of people that worked like vendors and stuff that want to shoot, they got to shoot it early. And for my own part, being kind of like media and trying to film, definitely easier to be able to film during that and then be freed up to go film other stuff during like the official competition. So one of the cool things though, getting brief through, and then ultimately going up and shooting it was, yeah, kind of, kind of testing it out more or less. So again, that morning had our safety brief, got squatted into some different groups and sent out to the range, 10 different stages. And for my own part, shot with a bunch of, a bunch of good people. Pretty good group we had going there. A lot of fun, just everyone there having fun. And basically just kind of start shooting through the different stages. Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. Being the first people to shoot through them, there were certain stages where things came up and it was like, hey, what about this? Because maybe this is not gonna work out. By way of example, one of the stages we got to was essentially working through these different barricades to include like cutouts, think kind of VTAC style barricade. And yeah, it was, it was eating people up people were basically running out of time. Like they couldn't keep it under the par time of I think like 180 seconds. 
And then, so it's like, all right, well, let's swap this barricade with this. And then now there's just two instead of three. So ended up shooting through that. Seventy nine thirty four. Okay, plenty Good. doable. Plenty doable. I want to say on that they cut it down to like a ninety second par time also, and I think myself and maybe one other person managed to get through under par. Everyone else was just running out of time. So change again. Basically this time swap arguably kind of the more difficult barricade for an easier barricade, and at that point it worked through. And there was definitely some kind of back and forth conversation trying to figure out what to do about it. Transition between the two. So I think that we would solve the issue just by swapping in the uh, step barricade vice the, uh, the um, sideways ports. And we already accomplished the task of shooting sideways on the next port or on the next uh, barricade wall. So I think that's a good option. It was kind of fun to see kind of that play out because at the end of the day, People will create stages and they're like, this should be good and they'll shoot through them. But until you get it to a larger audience, you maybe don't see where kind of maybe some like tight spots are with a stage design. And also recognizing like, hey, people are coming out here to have fun. Like this isn't some World Cup Olympic level shoot. Like, hey, we wanna come out and have fun. And yeah, so making sure that largely people should be able to shoot through this thing and again go back to the underlying idea of it's going to be fun so got to shoot through all those stages over that thursday and then going into friday shooting a couple more across the board all those stages were definitely a ton of fun and the whole event it's pretty cool in part because i'll just go ahead and say it like AK people are just kind of weird people. And I think weird is cool. Let me explain. Here's the deal. A while back, people that bought AKs were one, people that are like, oh, like AKs are kind of cool. But largely across the board, people bought AKs because they were cheap. You could get AKs really cheap, all these different imports, you get like pallets of them. It's like SKSs and stuff too at the same time, like super cheap. So People bought them because they were cheap and they bought the ammo because it was cheap, like pallets of seven and six, like five, four, five. All this stuff was really cheap. And then eventually a certain company was like, I'm going to find the bottom of the market. Palmetto State Armory. And they're like, we found the bottom of the market and now you can buy like a $350 AR. And at that point, why would you buy this AK when you could just buy an AR? which arguably better controls ergonomics, sorry AK people, like yeah, you could do that. And it's kind of cookie cutter, cheaper to like produce here in the States, so consequently like you can get a really cheap AR. And tons and tons of ammo, accessories, everything else. So people that just wanted a cheap gun and to stack away some ammo were no longer buying AKs, they were buying ARs and 5.56. So who was left? All the crazy people that just really love AKs for all their unique nuance, like all the different history of all the different generations, on and on and on. So all the crazy AK people, which I think is cool. 
And so consequently now, you can kind of find affordable AKs, but largely they're like really nice AKs because they're built by people that are super into them, tweak them, everything like that. Like my Rifle Dynamics Quick Hatch. That thing is amazing. And they've done some really incredible stuff to include like Occam Defense, amazing kind of like leaps with respect to technology. Like, ironically, America builds way better AKs than any Soviet country. Like, sorry, Russia, for reals. But with that, you have this really fun, cool, kind of crazy eclectic group that's really into AKs. And you end up seeing it there too. One with some of the guns people shoot and people just go out there and have fun. Like some of the costumes, like outfits people roll out there and also. For my own part, I think my favorite costume out there, I say it's a costume, who knows, you could wear it daily, but do dressed up like Bob Ross, the painter. It was pretty cool. There you go. And then on top of the shoot, like, it's kind of a big party. They have a couple food trucks and then they have a bunch of really cool vendor stuff. So all kinds of different vendors, largely centric to AKs and then basically kind of a range day too. So a lot of the vendors set up, whether it was Rifle Dynamics, Clash to Cuff USA, and to include a bunch of suppressor manufacturers, which is pretty sweet, to include Dead Air, and yeah, all these different host guns, and a bunch of different cans on a bunch of those guns, and a bunch of select fire stuff, which was pretty fun too. Also out there was Galil, IWI, and yeah, being able to shoot some of their stuff, pretty neat. Kind of interesting, yeah, basically adaptation of that piston design from an AK. Pretty cool shooting guns. While the kind of official Red October match was those 10 stages, either shot Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, Sunday, they also had an 11th kind of bonus stage, which is pretty fun. They had a couple pistols out there from IWI, chambered in nine millimeter, and you got two targets. And on the buzzer, basically Mozambique each one. Two to the chest, one to the head. And the fastest times would end up winning those pistols, which pretty cool. But if you dropped a single round, it was like a 60 second penalty. So if you dropped around at all, like completely out of the running. So yeah, pays to be a winner, but definitely you can go too fast if you miss. But fun little side stage, you gotta shoot there. Shooter ready? Ready. Stand by. Oh, is it a line break? Oh. And then probably one of my favorite parts is, well, they had, again, the official 10 stages of Red October. They had After Dark, which was set up for four different stages. And while they were going to kind of tweak them like substantially, so they were largely different stages than what you had shot during the day, they just did not have time. So it ended up actually being a little higher round count. So they ended up doing After Dark Saturday night, and it was set up 
basically two different divisions where you had a modern division where you could use like modern LED bulb, like high output lights, as well as lasers, night vision, whatever you want to use. And then they had the classic division where you basically had to use like an incandescent bulb light. So think like mag light or something like that. And iron sights as well, like nothing modern. So people got to shoot through those. That was definitely a lot of fun. For my own part, I shot in the modern side, shot three stages using night vision. And then one stage, I'm like, let's go white light. And I was using on my quick hatch, I had the mod button, the dual lead. So I basically had it set up to where when I would mash the button, my mall would turn on and my vampire, Surefire Scout Pro Vampire. So I either had it set up one of two ways, either the mall with a high beam illuminator and IR laser, and then I would turn the vampire over to IR. So it's kind of a throw, like a wide throw, flood, which is nice. And then shooting kind of this side, turn it over to white light, turn the mall on to green laser. So mash the button, I'd get white light and my green laser. But a lot of fun shooting through those four stages. Are you ready? Stand by. guys out there had a belt fed I'm like ah, I like your style and personally I feel like I need a PKM in my life I need to figure out how to get one because I need that but this guy was out there with his belt fed just burning through the stage it was it was pretty fun to watch and super concussive well largely the weather kind of cooperated on Saturday it got crazy windy to the point where the vendors actually kind of had to shut down early, but night match still went super windy and dusty though. And then fortunately, Sunday kind of got nice again and ultimately ended up wrapping up at the end of technically day four, I guess, Sunday, including Thursday, Friday, and wrapped up with an award ceremony and went through pretty cool prize table. They had, they had some awesome stuff on there a bunch of guns and something i appreciated is kind of how they did the prizes in that the people who are going to win were going to win in that if you have a shooting competition depending on kind of what flavor of competition you're probably going to draw like professional shooters people that wear jerseys because they are sponsored and they're probably going to end up winning so those people largely end up winning, which they most certainly did. But to also make it fun, you have other stuff going on to include the night shoot, the after dark. So there were prizes for that too. And then they ended up actually having a really big prize table inside the clubhouse there at Pro Gun. And that was basically a lottery. So after they went through in like first, second, third, all the different classes, divisions, everything like that, they're like, hey, random lottery of basically everyone that competed. And so in there, again, pretty cool prize table, guns, optics, all kinds of stuff. I think they even had suppressors and stuff in there. So if you came over from California to compete, probably didn't want to pick that off the prize table can never take ownership of it, but yeah, all kinds of stuff in there. And that was really cool to be able to have people that 
wanted to come out, have fun, shoot the competition, and ultimately still have a chance at winning something cool. And for my own part, I actually managed to win something. Remember that side stage I talked about, pistol stage? Well, I did not win that stage or win a pistol, but they did something kind of cool again with the prizes where they basically went 50th percentile and like 25th percentile, something like that. So of all the people that actually shot it clean, didn't drop around, I fell right in the middle with my time and I ended up winning. What did I win? Thousand rounds and nine mil. Yes, super stoked. Something that I can absolutely use. And yeah, no, I definitely really appreciated kind of the way they went about, yeah, essentially the prize table. Cause yeah, recognize the winners, but you're gonna end up with competitive shooters, sponsored shooters winning, but at the same time, give people the opportunity to actually win cool stuff that are out there having fun. This is pretty cool. Also, as a quick aside, I will say flying in to Vegas to go shoot and bringing pretty much all my ammo with me. I do appreciate that you could buy ammo on site. One of the vendors there was Ammo Supply Warehouse, which was pretty clutch when you ended up shooting through the day portion. Then it comes to nighttime adventures and you're like, oh, I don't think I have enough ammo. So to be able to get ammo right there on site, that was a good thing. But overall across the board, Red October, it was a lot of fun. For me personally, I've shot AKs, was never like super into AKs, but I do appreciate, again, just kind of the, the weird eclectic community around AKs. Cause it's no longer just the cheap gun that you buy because you want to have a gun and stack up some ammo. Now that largely is an AR. And so with that, you have the people that are actually really into and really appreciate that AK platform. And, all the different variations of it, which I don't know. Anything someone is super into, it's pretty easy to get interested in because people are passionate about it and that always shines through. Overall, really fun competition and yeah, fun stages too. Like just stage design across the board. It was a good time. I think for my own part, I, I'm trying to think where I placed. I wanna say, I don't know top third or something like that in my division, maybe something along those lines. It's one of those where it definitely did not benefit me coming from, I guess the last competition I did was like tactical games where if you drop around, like it's a 10 second penalty. So there's a, there's a really high accuracy standard. And so I'm like, okay, make sure I don't drop rounds at least on some of the stages. And then later on, I'm like, okay, I guess I can just shoot a bunch of rounds because it doesn't matter. And you watch people that like shoot competitively, it's just a bam, 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 like burning rounds down. And so I also flew with my ammo and I was like, I only have so much ammo. I could either shoot to the head or I'm sorry, to the chest or one to the head. Like I'm gonna just head shoot everyone. That way I don't have to choose as many bullets. But overall, really fun competition. If you're interested in going and competing Red October, it happens in October annually. And yeah, it's pretty fun. You can follow, kind of stay abreast of the information over out there, probably Facebook and Instagram, I guess, probably the easiest way, but pretty cool competition. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.